Hello crafters and welcome to Cryptic Design Studio. Uh, my name is Nick and today we're going to go through the ins and outs of Cricut Design Space. Now let me start by saying that this is a beginner instructional video. So if you already know how to use Design Space, uh, please feel free to jump to any of my other videos. Before we start, uh, please do me a huge favor and click that subscribe button down below. Um, next to the subscribe button, there's a little bell icon. Uh, make sure that that's turned on so that you'll be notified anytime I release a new video. I appreciate your support and it really helps the channel. Now, let's have some fun. First thing we're going to do is in order to use Cricut Design Space, you have to have Cricut Design Space. So if you haven't already, uh, go ahead and go to Cricut.com. Let me bring this over here. Uh, Cricut.com, C-R-I-C-U-T dot com. As soon as you get to that, right over here in the right top uh, corner is the word design. Click on that, and it'll bring you to the design space download. Uh, click on download, and when you do, it's going to download an .exe file that you can double click to install design space. I already have it installed, so I'll go ahead and skip that method. Um, once you open Design Space, once you have it downloaded and installed, double click it on your desktop and it's going to open. Um, this is the home page. Now, I've been working with Design Space, so I have several projects that are already open here. Um, if you've never used it, you won't. You won't have anything here. Uh, if you have used it, these will be your most recent, the most recent ones that you've saved. Um, if you open one and don't save it, it probably won't show in here. You'll have to scroll to get to it. Um, you can also open them from clicking on my projects right up here in the top right corner. So this again is your home layout. Your projects are listed here. You can start a new project right from here. Just click this um, frame right here or go up into the top right where this green button is and click on new project. Uh, down underneath that, there's a bunch of projects. If you have Cricut Access, uh, even if you don't, these will show up here, uh, but you may not have access to them. Um, there is a 30-day free trial if you want to try out Cricut, uh, Cricut Access. Um, they have them categorized by infusible ink and oil transfer, etc. But again, this is just the home page. There's different ways to get to that. So let's start up here. Up on the top, you have File. This is where you can open a new window or you can quit Design Space altogether. Open a new window is uh, just, well, oh, here I'll show you. It just opens a whole new Cricut Design Space. Uh, so you could actually be working on several different projects at once. Go ahead and close that. That was probably loud. Um, view is to reload your screen or force reload your screen and you can toggle full screen which as you can see is also F11. Uh, F11 just takes that little bar off the top gives you just a little bit more real estate to work with um, and then of course you have your your help section right now I'm using design space version 6.0.150 uh, design space does update automatically you can always check that as well by going to help about and mine opened on another screen but it will show a Cricut logo with the version underneath it uh, underneath that uh, there are there is also some help videos here and you can contact member care if you need to uh, underneath that is these three little lines with the word home those three little lines are your menu you can any at any time no matter what screen you're on you can click these three little lines and get right back to this page um underneath that is your canvas if you click on canvas it's going to open your current canvas again click home and you're right back home now if you have a new machine and have not set it up you can do that right here uh it's going to walk you through what type of machine you're installing and it will install the drivers you need and the firmware updates that you need 
it also tells your machine, your uh, Cricut Design Space, what type of machine you're using. Let's go ahead and exit out of that. We want to cancel it. Oops, sorry. Okay. All right, next one down is a calibration. So this is for uh, if you're doing print then cut, uh, and it tells you right here, get the most accurate cuts for print then cut. You can click this, I'm not going to right now, but it will take you through calibrating your machine so that you can get the perfect cutouts when you do print and cut. Manage custom materials is a helpful screen. You have to have your machine on. Uh, give it a second and Bluetooth will pick up. This is all of your uh, machine dial settings and uh, it gives you the cut pressure, whether it's a multi-cut and the blade type. Um, this is handy. I don't know that I would go through and change any of these unless you're really having issues cutting. Uh, leave them all as is, but it is a handy tool if you need to know, let's say I want to make, um, I want to cut craft bone. Sure, it tells me it's a four times cut at 123 pressure, but it also tells me I need a deep point blade. Right now I have a fine point blade in, so if I want to use that, uh, I need to have a deep point blade. Uh, there are also, sometimes it shows, I don't see any. They all seem to say either fine or deep point. There are several types of blades that you can use with your Cricut, uh, which will allow you to cut other material. You can even add new material with custom settings. Again, I would leave this alone for right now, especially if you're a beginner, but it does give you an idea of what blade types you need. Uh, let me go back into that just one second. It also tells you right here which machine you're using, and you can switch machines. So if you have several machines hooked up, uh, right now I only use the Air 2. Um, but if you have, say, the Air 2 and the Joy, or the Maker and the Air 2, you can switch machine and have custom settings on each machine. Again, back to home. Here is where you can update your firmware. Um, it automatically will update your firmware the first time you connect it. You can click on this at any time. It'll search for your machine, which you can also change. And then it's going to tell me that my machine is up to date. If it's not up to date, I can click the update button. Or if it says there's an update available, I can click the update button and it'll download the new firmware update. You always want to keep your firmware up to date. The firmware is just the software inside the machine that it uses uh, so that it communicates well with your Cricut Design Space. It knows which pressure settings. Um, sometimes there's bug fixes, etc. Always want to keep that up to date. Now, um, account details will take you to your account page. It's going to take you online. Um, I'm not going to obviously show that video because it shows my, I'm sorry, that screen because it shows my sign in information and everything. Um, but it takes you to your actual uh, Cricut account, which is where you can um, order things. You can change your address, change your profile, your payment settings. You can subscribe to Design Space, um, set your email preferences, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, next one is link cartridges. So the Air 2 and the Maker um, and the Joy do not use cartridges, but the older uh, Cricut machines used to use cartridges. Now, if you look on your, let's say you have the Air 2. Let me um, pull up an image of the Air 2 if we can find one here um this one will work Pull this one over here so if you look at this one the top down view of course now you're not going to show me it are you the top down view shows uh kind of see it over here there's this little holder right here, 
or your tools and, and etc right underneath that is a little flap and if you open that flap you'll you'll see inside there's a spot that you can connect a cartridge if you have the cartridges from the old style cricket machines you can actually plug them in here and you can upload what's on that cartridge into design space it's going to tell you right here insert your cartridge into the port on the top left side of the machine just push that little you don't even have to push the flap down just push the cartridge into the flap make sure it's connected it's going to um, ask you to link the cartridge and then you can use that with design space um, let's see what else do we have here Cricut access is going to tell you you know you have right now I'm on a um, trial offer of access so I have it for 30 days uh, it is $7.99 a month it starts at uh, it, the base one is $10 a month $9.99 you can change that at any time, obviously. Go over to manage your subscription. Um, and we'll go through what does uh, Cricut Access includes a little later in the video. Go back to home. Uh, your settings in here, you can change your language. Your canvas grid. So if you see this here, let me get out of this. Canvas grid, remember that. When we go in here, we have all these little grid lines, okay? Let's say I'm making um, a t-shirt, okay? And I want a black t-shirt. This is really hard to see if I put an image on it. If I wanna get rid of these lines, I can right up here where zero and zero meet, there's this little white box in the top left here, if you can see. If you click that once, it turns it off. If you click it again, it makes them larger grid lines. These go by, uh, it may start with larger for you and then go to smaller and then go to none. Um, but this is where you can alter the grid lines that you see. Okay. If we go back to home, if you didn't have to do that, but if you go to settings, this canvas grid, if I do no grid, it's always going to show me no grids. I can always turn them on if I want to. Okay, but let's say I want to start a new project. It's going to start with no grid lines. Personally, I prefer no grid lines. I do a lot of uh, t-shirts and um, mugs and decals and stuff. The grid lines just kind of get in my way. They don't really serve me any purpose. Um, if I have an image on here, I have a ruler right here along the top and a ruler right here along the side. And I also have my width and height right here at the top. So I can always see what size my my project is at any time. Some people do like the grid lines. You can always turn them on and off. Uh, let's go back to home. Menu. Uh, there's some legal information here if you need it. New features will update whenever you have a Cricut Design ups update. So if you go to launch Cricut Design Space and it tells you that there was a new update or it shows updating and that makes you sign in again, you can always go right here on new features and it's going to tell you what they are. Um, your country, you can change that. Um, this will change your pricing and everything, your uh, currency for whatever country you're in. It's not going to, it gave me an error because I'm already set on United States. And then you have your help and you can sign out of Design Space here. Uh, that's pretty much the menu. Let's go back home from our home page. You can see up here. It's giving me a nice little message here. Welcome Nicholas Over on the right as I said before I can start a new project. I Can change which device I'm using Try and keep this on the device that you're using if you use multiple devices Try and change it based on the device you have it customizes the content that you're seeing uh, based on what machine you're using. Um, there are some things that with the Joy, because it's smaller, you're not going to be able to make, so it won't show you those designs. It just uh, gives it a more personalized experience. And then uh, the last one here is My Projects. You can click on that at any time, and it gives you a whole list of your projects. Um, now, you can also get to that by clicking over here, Projects. Okay. Click it again, takes you back to your canvas.
All right, so now let's go down the left side here. All right, so templates, you can use these to give you an idea of what your design is going to look like on whatever it is that you're making. These are just templates. They do not print out. So for instance, let's say I want to make a cup. Uh, it's white, so we're not going to see it. Right here, I can change the style. I can change the size. And I can change the color. Okay, let's put that on black. And let's do style 1. 18 ounce. Okay. Now, for some reason, that wasn't showing up until I hit my grid lines. Okay, that, that's a good way. If you're not seeing something, a template that you should see, just kind of click this, and it'll, it gives it sort of a refresh. And now I can see my glass. Even though this is a black outline of a glass, it's a template. It will not print this out when I go to click on Make It. In fact, it won't even let me click on Make It because this is not a design. This is just a template. I can change the color of the glass to anything I want. Um, even white, it's going to give you the black outline so you can see that it's white. Okay. So now, uh oh, that disappeared. I can't change the color anymore. Anytime that happens, you, you, you lose this template, it disappears on you, it changes color on you, and you want to change it back. Go down over here to the bottom right where it says drinking glasses. Click on that, and it brings it right back up for you. Okay, um, there is a custom where you can set the size of the glass. You cannot drag it like a regular vi um, image, but you can change it manually. You can unlock it and change just the height, just the width, or just use one of theirs. Typically what I do is I use an 18 ounce. If this is the general shape of the glass that I'm using, then I will use this as just a template. Um, if I'm using say a wine glass or um, a, you know a funky shaped glass that that you're not gonna find a template for I usually just measure the glass and I don't even use the template all right so they do have other just so you know uh, they do have other um, glasses and cups that you can use uh, if you want you can filter this will filter down what you see so if I only want to see cards if I only want to see fashion, um, I usually keep it on all and then I'll search for whatever I need. So if I need, well, first you got to spell it right. If I need glass, this is anything that's glass. So see, it does have goblets. If I click on a goblet, do I want a water goblet? Do I want a wine goblet? Do I want a champagne cup? Um, you know, cocktail, champagne cups, a lot of, you know, a lot of us make them for weddings. Um, this is going to give you a good template right now we are at 100 percent zoomed so if you see this this um template is roughly it starts at one goes to about three and a half so it's roughly two and a half inches wide now maybe that's not the right size for me um you know i can keep it on champagne i can go to a custom one and i can say well this one the one that I'm using is uh, six inches high. Okay, so I can change that. I can unclick this and say it's six inches wide, but it's two and a half inches wide. Okay, now that's what I'm using. You can change that at any time. And again, it's just a visual image so that you'll see what it looks like, uh, what your design looks like on the glass. That pretty much covers templates. There's, I encourage to use these. I use the shirt one quite often. Um, I don't use the cup ones very often, but I do, I have used the bowl. I have used, um, what else have I used? A lot of people use the Cricut machine. You can actually make, um, decals for your machine. But again, you get the idea. You can, you can pretty much make an image for anything. They even have the mixers. Um, so I have a KitchenAid. I do a lot of baking. I can actually make a nice design for my KitchenAid. All right, so let's go ahead and if I don't want to see the, if I have an image on here, I don't want to see it, just go down to the bottom right, turn it off. Get rid of these grid lines, I do not like them. All right, again, there's a projects button here on the left. 
you can click that at any time and get to the projects. Right now, it's going to show you all projects, but you can categorize them. You can see only my projects right up here on the top right. Click on all categories and change it to my projects. These are only mine. If I click on my favorites, it's ones that I've seen that I've clicked on a favorite for. So for instance, this little star right here, if I really like this and I want to make it sometime, but I got to get the materials. If I don't have the materials, I can click on this star and it favorites it, added to my favorites. So now if I go to my favorites, there's a nice quick little access to the ones that I really like and want to make. I can turn that off and it will remove it from there. So now if I go to my projects, go to my favorites, it's gone. All right now, go back to all categories. Um, the ones that you see in here that have the little A with the green little banner here, those are Cricut Access Designs um, or projects, I should say. These typically are ready to go. You can you can actually just click it and click make it and it's ready to go. You you don't have to do anything. You can customize it. Just click this little button down here and you can change the size of it. You can change what it says. You can change the colors and fully customize it. It's sort of like a pre-made template that you can use. Um, which is really handy. You can scroll through, you know, some pictures and what it's going to look like. Okay. Um, there's also, now if you click on these, let's go cover that. You can share it, obviously. You can favorite it. If you click on it and you don't have access, right now it's telling me subscribe so I can make it. If I don't have access, it's going to tell me that it's a Cricut Access um project and I can either pay for it or I can get Cricut access and it's included with it. You may see where it says 4.99 dash free. If it says 4.99, that means it's going to cost you $5 for that if you don't have access. You can buy just that project. Um but the dash free means if you have access, it's included with that subscription. Um, sometimes you'll see 0.00-free. That means it's going to cost you $0 or free with access. So it's essentially a free project. Um, in fact, I want to say this one actually is a free project, but click around them, and when it comes up, you'll see it. It'll tell you if you scroll down here. A short description of what it is, You know whether it's easy, hard, uh, medium, how long it should take you to make it. Of course, that's just an estimate. Take your time. Um, you can print out this page, which is handy, so that you can bring it to the store with you and say, okay, I need uh, glitter card stock, and I don't have any adhesive foam dots. I need to get those. Gives you a nice idea. It's sort of like a little recipe for you. Um, now, down here, you can also click on, hey, I really like this. I really like this ornament. I want to make more things like that. You can click on these, and it kind of, brings you to similar items. So this is pretty much uh, your, that's gonna pretty much cover what the project is. You can search by uh, devices that you have. You can look for only free ones. This is free regardless of whether you have access or not, okay? This one is only Cricut Access uh, projects. Um, these are ones that were shared by the Cricut community, so by, People like you and I that have created our own project and we say, you know, we, this is kind of nice. We should share this with people. Um, you can do that right here. There's actually, when you make a design, it gives you the option if you want to share it with the community. Um, take caution with these if you do use them. Uh, not everybody's perfect, so there could be typos. There could be uh, design size uh, issues. You know, maybe it's not sized perfectly. Um, again, just really take a look at it when you, when you open something from here. Um, it's great that everybody shares with you, but just always check your, uh, always check your spelling, always check your grammatical errors, um, and always check your sizes, but they are handy. Um, Pretty much everything else is, uh, you know, categories. So you just choose whatever you want. I only want to do iron on, or I only want to see items that require um, vinyl or 
are, are for kids, okay? So that'll pretty much cover that. Now, images, if you just click on images, you can browse any images you want, okay? This comes up naturally. You can search. Um, this is where when you saw the Cricut Access uh, subscription screen, and it said it has you know 100,000 plus images, this is where you're gonna find those. You can search, or you can just click out of that, and you can start to scroll. Over here on the left is a filter section where you can filter it by all these categories. Um, whether they're layered, you know, I maybe I'm not comfortable layering yet. I'm just learning. I, I don't want to layer anything. I just want to make some simple designs, get used to it, get used to weeding. Let's click single. These are things that are not going to require me to do any layering. Okay. Click off of it. And now I'm back to everything. Um, now I've learned that and I want to start layering. I, I want to find something that I can layer. Let's click on multi. Okay. Now we can see this. This is also going to show you images that you've made, okay, yourself. Um, ownership, ones that you've uploaded, ones that you've purchased, ones that are free, or ones that you've downloaded. You can filter by that. Click these little minus signs to hide those. Um, these are for brand specific. It's not an inclusive list, so if you don't see it on this list, it doesn't mean that it's not in design access. It just means that they haven't given it a brand label. Um, so I'm a big Marvel fan. Let's go ahead and see what they have for Marvel. Now I can make any of these. Okay. Now see how they cost money. But wait a minute. I have access. So why do they cost money? Access doesn't give you access, pardon the pun, to everything. There are still ones that you have to pay for. Um, this is because of licensing and copyright and things like that. Okay. So any of these, if you want them, click on them. And you know, let's try this. Okay. I can buy this whole set for $30. Pretty good deal. Um, you know, you can look on Etsy. You can look on other places and probably find similar ones. Um, and probably even pay a cheaper price. But those people are probably not licensed to be able to sell that image to you. Um, so if you, you know, if you really need a Marvel image and you don't know how to make an SVG and you don't know how to make your own, go ahead and maybe purchase from here. Um, that was a uh, brand. You can search by material. You can search by language. So if you're searching like, you know, images that have words in them, um, complexity, you get the idea. Okay. So that's that. Go back to images. Um, start back fresh. Click on images. And it's going to take me right where I left off. Okay. So let's uncheck Marvel. Now I see all images again. Now, text will do just that. It's going to add a text onto your canvas. Hello, world. Okay. That adds, now, if I want to, I can click make it. That's going to print out on whatever material I tell it to. Hello world in six inches wide by one inches high. Six and a half inches wide. Okay, in that font. Um, I can change the size. You know, we can go really small, really big. Uh, I can unlock it so that I can move it whatever way I want. Okay, and then once I get it there, I can lock it again, and now... It's distorted, and I can I can even turn it. I can flip it around if I want, right? That's pretty much text in a nutshell. Now, what you can do with text is I'm going to make this a little bigger so we can see it. This is pretty cool. This is exactly what I want, but there's some things wrong. I don't I don't like this font. This is not a very pretty font. Um. And everything looks good except see the W, see how far away the W is from the rest, rest of the word world? I don't like that either. So you can fix these using letter space, font right here, style, uh, your font size, you can curve it. There's advanced options. You can change all that. So if you don't like how this looks, don't worry, you can change it. 
We'll go into that here in a second. Down here under shapes, these are preset shapes um, that you can use if you need a shape, but you can also use them for more advanced things like um, a square. If I want a, uh, let's say I'm making an, let's say I'm making an etched glass. Okay, and for some odd reason, this glass is squared and I want it to say, hello, but I'm gonna etch it. So I can actually use this square, put this here, okay? Click on both of these, slice it. Now I can move what I sliced out of the way. Now I have a square with the word hello cut out of it. I can print this in vinyl, put it over my glass or whatever it was I'm gonna etch, and use my etching cream or whatever method I etch with, and it's only gonna etch the word hello. Okay, so you can use it for, for things like that. And then upload. Uh, upload allows you to upload an image from your computer. Any image that you have on your computer uh, it can be a JPG, it can be a PNG, an SVG, uh, any type of image file, it does right here. Um, even a GIF or a, or a bitmap you can upload, okay? Once you upload it, it's gonna put it in, it's gonna go through, um, well, let me show you. If I browse, let's find an image. Um, let's say I wanna use, uh, this is one I made recently. Let's say I wanna use an Among Us character, okay? This is an SVG. I, I made it, well, it's an SVG, but, you want if if you have this menu if it's a true SVG, you're probably not going to have this menu. But if you do, I always click complex. Uh, it just gives me the really fine details, no real jagged edges and things that I'm not uh, expecting in the picture. Always click on complex. Click continue. This right here will give me the option to delete certain things out of the image. So. If I minimize right up here in the top right, minimize, this is what it looks like right now. Here's a preview of what it looks like if I'm if I import it as just a regular image. Okay. Hide the preview. Let's say I want to make this for whatever reason. I want to make it, but I don't want the black. Or let's say you have a background in here, okay? You can click on that and it's gonna remove it. So I don't want it with the black. Click on the black, it's gone. Miss some up here, so I'm going to try and click up there. Gone. Okay, I can clean that up after with contour. Um, but you can click on advanced and change your colors and your tolerance. Also, if you don't want to click and you just want, like, so up here I have the black dots. If you can still see that, let me zoom in. See the black line still up here? If I want to clean that up, I can just click on the erase tool right here instead of select. Click on the erase and change my size a little bit and i can just go and erase that now um or you can crop out unwanted areas so then you would go to continue now it's going to ask do you want it as a save as a print and cut or do you want to save it as a cut um you can do either one and they are reversible. So if you save it to a print then cut, you can always change it to a cut afterwards. Give it a nice name over here, and then you can click on tags so that if you're going to share it with the community, this will allow them to find it easy. So this is an Among Us character, so I would type Among Us, comma, um, video games, comma, whatever else I can think of. All right, and then save it, and when you save it, it's going to place it in here. It'll take you back to that blank screen, right? So it's going to save it in here, right in the first spot. You can then click that and upload it. Uh, I'm sorry, insert it. You can also upload a pattern. Um, this is for if you're uh, doing print and cut or you want to see what a certain pattern of vinyl will look like. Okay. That pretty much covers that much of design space. Now let me load... Let me load my Deadpool image in here again so that we can cover this. Excuse me, why did you? Oh, I must have clicked on both. That's okay. Let's 
Um, let's delete that so that we only have Deadpool. Again, I don't know why I put this Iron Man thing. But we're gonna we're gonna delete that. I must have goofed up making the SVG. So this is an SVG that I made of the Deadpool logo. It right now it's all grouped and it's giving me a little warning right here because it's too big. 23 and a half by 11 and a half. Okay. I only have it that way for you know for the video. I probably wouldn't print it that. Maybe I would want to print it that big. I don't know. Um but I'm definitely going to need a bigger mat if I want to do that. Um you are restricted even if you have the 24 inch mat to an 11 and a half inch width. So if I type 11. Dot five right up here click enter i have an 11 11 and a half inch width 11.501 tall it's probably going to give me an error if i go to make this because it's over 11 and a half inches tall um but i can change it to a 24 inch tall mat but i'm still restricted to 11 and a half inches wide okay so you you'll get to know your images the more you work with it uh your your lengths and widths um, based on what machine you have and what um, what mat you have, whether it's a 12 by 12 or it's a 12 by 24. Um, now, these, because of the way I save the SVG, they're grouped. I can ungroup them at any time, move these around. These are my three separate prints that I'm going to do. The colors of these right now don't matter in the sense that I'm making it red, black, and white. If I wanted to make it purple, yellow, and green, I could leave them black, red, and white. Just put purple, red, and green, or whatever color is purple, yellow, and green on your mat. This just tells the the, the software these are going to be cut out in three different colors. Regardless of whatever color those are, it's going to cut out in those three colors. Okay. For mine, I actually want black, red, and white. Okay. If I highlight them all, I can now move them all together. And I can resize them all. Okay? All at the same time. If I think the red's too big, and I just want to resize that, click on the red so that it's highlighted over here. You can just resize that. Okay? Click undo if you didn't, if you made a mistake. All right? Now, since this is pretty much going to be ready, okay? Everything is ready. If I highlight them all, they're all set to cut. They're all set to no fill. Okay. All I'm doing is I'm cutting this out of decal. I'm not I'm not doing a printing cut. I'm not doing it out of foil. I'm just doing a simple cut. A fill is if you're gonna print. I'm not printing. Okay. Now, I don't have to regroup these all to be able to make it. Um, all I have to do is click up here on make it. Actually, you know what? It's gonna give me an error because it's too big. Let's bring it down to eight and a half by eight and a half. Okay. Now, if I click make it, it's going to place it because I made them three different colors. Okay. It's going to make them three different colored mats. You can still make them all the same color if you want, but you're going to have to load three different mats. This one is white. That doesn't mean I have to print it out in white. If I want to put yellow vinyl on there, I can do that. This is just telling me it's a different color than these. You can change your material size. This is your, um, this is essentially your mat size. Okay, whatever size mat you're printing on. Um, click on the black, you have the same options. Click on the red, you have the same options. The mirror is if you're going to be using HTV or uh, heat transfer vinyl. Um, there's gonna be other occasions where you would wanna mirror it. For instance, if you're making a decal and you wanna put it on the other side of the window, you might mirror it so that the sticky side is on the other side. Um but this is essentially <laughs> these are all these are all symmetrical shapes so it's not going to show you but essentially when you click this it flips it. So if you have wording and it says hello world going left to right, when you click mirror, it'll say hello world but it'll go right to left. It'll be backwards. All right? Click apply, you can change how many times you want to print this project. Click apply. Now I can print 3 of them. Helpful if you're doing several t-shirts or several decals. Go back down to one. Now I'm only making one. Okay. And then um, once I click continue, 
Right now, I don't want to mirror them. I'm going to leave them on 12 by 12, and I'm going to leave them on three separate colors. I can move the image on the mat. Now, you notice you have a 12 inch by 12 inch mat, okay? Well, it's not letting me put it all the way over there. Cricut allows itself maybe a quarter inch of error. We'll call it safe space, okay? So inside this red box is your safe space. If it's in this red box, 99.9% .9 of the time, it'll print no matter where you put it in this red box. In fact, it won't even let me put it outside of the red box. This is why I say you are limited to 11 and a half inches width by 11 and a half inches tall or 23 and a half inches tall based on your mat because there's a quarter inch here and a quarter inch here that it leaves for um, room for error, okay? So any image, if, if you try and make it bigger than 11 and a half inches, it's gonna throw a warning at you, okay? If I click on this, I can move it or I can hide the selected object or let's say, um, I want two of these. Okay. It's going to put them like that, but wait a minute. I don't, I, I don't have that. I have a piece that I can put it right here. Let's say these are smaller and I can put it right here. I have a wider piece, but I don't have a taller piece. You can do one of two things. Um, either get a different piece or put it over here. You can move these wherever you want. I want to save space and make them like this and I'll just cut them out and place them freehand. Okay. You can do it however you want. Click on, actually, let me go back down to one project. Click on continue. Okay, now it's going to connect my machine. Give it a second. It'll find your machine via Bluetooth or if you have it directly plugged in. All right, now it's telling me, let's go through this setup. Set your base material. When you first start out on Design Space, you won't have anything here. Excuse me. Uh, it'll, it'll be blank. Okay, click on Browse All Materials. This is going to show you all compatible, right here, materials. These are compatible with your machine. You can click on all materials, but you may find ones that are not compatible, okay, because of the machine you have. Now, click on Compatible, okay, and when I highlight over them, see this little star, just like in the project, Click that star and it'll keep, save it as your favorite so that it shows up here. I use a lot of premium vinyl, sparkle vinyl, and everyday iron on, so I have those favorited. Any other ones, I can just search it. And they have them categorized, fabric, felt, foam, iron-on, all different kinds of iron-on, okay? Everyday iron-on. Um, where's down here is the vinyl, okay? Adhesive foil, adhesive foil. Premium vinyl. Well, I'm using vinyl, but I'm using temporary. It doesn't matter. Just use premium vinyl. Temporary vinyl and permanent vinyl cut the same. So look for the closest option you have. This just tells it uh, in the beginning when we went through that home menu and you had all your um, pressure settings and your tip settings. This is this is what that's for. This tells the machine how much pressure to use when cutting the material, okay? Once I click my material, I'm gonna make this out of premium vinyl. It's telling me right here, I have the option, I can use a little more or a little less pressure. Leave it on default unless your blade's getting worn out. Uh, maybe put a little bit more. If it's starting to cut through your material, maybe you have, for some reason, a super sharp blade, put it on less. Once you do this, you're ready to print. On my on my um, Explorer 2 right now, I've got the flashing arrow button. It's ready to receive the mat. And it tells me right here, there's no tool required in clamp A, okay? I can load a fine point blade in clamp B, which is what I always have there anyways. Now it's telling me to load my mat, press the load unload button, okay? So I do that, put my mat in there, press the load button. This will come up and say, press go, speed automatically set for the material. Press the flash and go button, the little cricket icon on your machine. It'll print it. Once it prints it, I'll see a box here that's telling me, you know, 10%, 20%, how much percent of this mat, the one that's highlighted in white, it's printing. Once it's done with that, it's going to tell me to unload my material. It'll skip to this one and go through the same thing until you're done.
Once you're done, you would click on finish down here. And you'll be back to this screen. Nope, you won't. You'll be back to this screen. Okay? And that's it. That's how you go through the printing of it. Um, again, you have your options up here. Cut and print. And um, you have other options here. You can deselect everything. You can select everything. You can edit, cut and copy. If I want to copy and then I want to paste. So now I have two of them. I can do that. Okay. Um, you can also, I can highlight one here. You have a line where you can align them based on the left side, the right side, the top, the bottom, or you can align them by the center of the image. You can also distrib distribute them evenly, which is helpful if you're printing, um, you know, five let's say you got five stars for some reason you want to give something a five star review uh you can highlight those five stars click on distribute and it's going to give them perfect spacing in between them okay you can arrange which is send to back send forward um this is essentially over here okay right now i have the white all the way forward the black is the middle layer the red is the bottom layer if I want the red to be the top layer, I can either click it and I can right click here and get to these, or I can go up here to arrange and click send to front. Now it's in the front. The black and the white aren't gone. They didn't get deleted. They're just behind the red, okay? Now, if I wanna move that back, send to back, okay? Um, you have flip, it's not gonna really show let me put these off center so you can see it. Okay. If this is an image I'm using, I can click it and then I can flip horizontal. Now they're on the other side. I can flip vertical. Now they're upside down. So you can use this as you need. Your size and your, uh, sorry, your width and your height. Again, you can either drag it or you can manually set it in here. You can unlock it right here or down here. And this will allow it so you can move only width or only height. Rotate. You can click up or down, or you can click this. And you'll see if I move it here, see how that number changed? Now I want to go back to zero. I can't get it back to zero. That's tough. Okay, put it at zero. Here we go. Manually type it in. Okay. And then your position is where it is on the mat itself. So if I go... Your X axis is your horizontal axis. Y is your vertical. You'll see as I move this around the mat, those numbers change. That's just where it's positioned on the mat. So it gives you the fine tuning capability. Um, you know, the black, if I can't seem to get it lined up just perfect over the red, I can use my horizontal axis and move it over. Or I can use the arrow buttons on my keyboard, just like this. And I can move it up and down, okay? And I'm, on a vertical or horizontal axis. Not gonna let me move it diagonal. That I'm gonna have to do on my own, okay? That's pretty much um, the top menu, and now your side menu real quick. Uh, and I apologize for the length of this video. I didn't want it to be this long. Um, you have, this is essentially layers, layers of your image. Let me delete these, so we're just down to the one, okay? I highlight it all, these are my layers. All three are highlighted. If I click on the black, just my black layer is highlighted. Click on white, just the white layer, okay? If I wanna hide the white layer, I don't wanna see it right now, I can click on this little eye right here and it hides it. Doesn't delete it, just hides it. I can click on the black, hide it, hide it, okay? You can click on all three, hide all three. Now, um, with these layers, okay, I can click any of them. I find it easier to click them over here in the layers panel instead of trying to click. Sometimes you try and click it and like, I'm trying to get the red, but I keep getting the black. It's easier to click it over here, okay? Plus you can make sure you're on the, the right layer and not make a mistake. Um, if I want two, but I, I only want two of the white layer, I can duplicate that and it puts it right on top of everything else. 
So now I can move it. I can put it underneath the layers if I want using our um, arrange up here. I can flip it. I can do whatever I want. Okay. So if I want to duplicate everything, highlight everything. Just drag over it and highlight it. Or click on these, hold down your shift button, click all three, and then I can duplicate all three. Okay. Um, I can also delete a layer if I want. Or I can take all three layers and I can group them. Now what grouping them does is I can't click on an individual one and move it anymore. I can only move the whole, I can't click just the white, okay? Even if I try over here, click the white layer, it won't let me do it. That makes it so that once you get things lined up perfectly, you don't accidentally end up moving something. You can just keep them all together. If you do need to move them, just click on the group, ungroup, now you can move everything individually again, okay? Now, um, that's pretty much gonna cover, you do have color sync. It allows you to sync colors to use fewer materials. So let's say I have, let's say I, um, I duplicated my, my red, or I made another something that's red. Oh, here's, here's a good option. Remember when we were talking about the stars? I wanna put stars and I wanna put four of them. Uh, I'm going to try and get it red. Let's see. There. It's not the same red, but I want it to be. Okay. Click on your star over here. Click on shift and click on the red. Now I have them both highlighted. Go over to color sync and I want a color sync. To change colors, drag and drop an object onto the layer of your desired color. Okay. I want these to be red. Oh, it's not working. Drag and drop. Oh. Here we go. Let's do this. Okay. Bam. Now they're both red. If I want the black to be red. Bam. Now I want everything white. Bam. They're all white. Excuse me. Oh, it only allows me to. Oh, yeah. It allows me to do one at a time. Can't drag the whole thing. Okay. Now I lost my black layer, so I've really screwed things up. Well, let's go here and just change this back to black. Here we go. Change this back to red. We know it's the darker one, but if I chose the wrong one, uh, you know, I tried to get the right red, just go into color sync. Drag this down to my star. Now they're both red. That's your layers menu, okay? Um, as you get more layers, you'll be able to scroll. Uh, once you click on layers, you'll have some options down underneath. Okay, slice, weld, attach, and flatten. Um, to go over these real quick, slice will take two images and slice them together. So it will take my star and my circle and slice them. You can only slice two layers at a time, two single individual layers. If I have something that's grouped, I cannot slice it. If I, for instance, see if I click on the star and the circle, I get the slice option. If I group, say the eyes and the star, and now I try and click on that group and the, the circle, I lose my ability to slice. You can only slice individual items, okay? Excuse me, ungroup, thank you, ungroup, thank you. Okay, so now I have my star and my circle and I want to slice them. What's that do? It takes whatever image is on top and whatever image is underneath and it's like a cookie cutter. It takes this star and cuts the shape out of the circle. Okay, but I also have these two images here. This is the image that was cut out of here. This is my original star. Okay. So you can use that it's pretty much a cookie cutter. That's probably the best way I think to explain it. If I did that and now I don't want that star there, I want it back the way it was. I want it solid red. That's where you're going to use this contour button. Contour is hiding or showing um, pieces of your image. Okay. So that star is there right now. You can let me actually slide it over so we can see it really well when I have this open. You can't move this contour window, okay? 
I want this I want the star to be red again I want that as a solid image well I can go in here and sometimes this is hard to get on right on the exact thing you want if it is just use the side menu I want the star right now it's cut out I don't want it cut out okay if you click it it doesn't do anything to your image okay what I can do is hide all contours now it's solid red that star is still cut out it remembers that I cut it out so if I want to go back in and I say now I want it cut out again click on it there so the star is a contour if you want it cut out click it now the now that the circle's gone okay I want the circle click it it's there I want the circle I don't want the star So you can play around with that and get it. That's helpful really for if you upload um, SVGs that you've made, but they're not quite perfect. You might have a couple little dots on the outside. You can go into contour and fix that. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, let's see. We click on our circle. If you click on all four or even just two, however many you want, more than one layer. You can flatten them, attach them, or weld them. Flatten them makes them all one image. These are not grouped or ungrouped or anything. These are all one image. Okay, there's no different layers. Um, I can undo that. And then, excuse me, undo that, undo that. There we go. Now I can also attach. Attach means that Uh, if I, if these are the same colors, but they're not attached, let me detach them. Okay. When I go to put these two on my mat, it's going to probably, it's probably going to put the star somewhere like this. It's going to try and make the best use out of your mat for the least amount of wasted material. Okay. Now, if I have it like this and this is perfectly lined up on the bottom, okay, align bottom. Now the star and the circle are perfectly lined up on the bottom. I want it like that because when I when I iron this onto a shirt, I don't want to have to try and measure and get a ruler and figure out where exactly the bottom is. I want it just like this. I don't care about the wasted vinyl. Click attach and it will put it on your mat exactly like this. Where you're really going to want to make sure you do this is when you have wording. Okay, I'll show you what I mean. Let me hide everything. Let me put a text box box in and say hello. Okay, put another text box in. World. Okay. And this is what I want to print, and I want it just like this. Now I hit everything else, but if I go to make it, watch what it's going to do. Oh, it's not going to do it. Why is it not going to do it? Oh, we were unable to pre-order it. Excuse me. I didn't buy anything. Let's do this. Let's do a new. That's probably because I was trying to. Um, I was messing around with those Marvel logos. Okay. I. Let's say I'm not going to do it for this. It's still going to print it. Uh, together what I want to do is let's say we'll go through this and go through this more in a later video but let's say I want to ungroup them and I want to move these all over closer to the W okay they're all ungrouped now if I click on make it see what it does with my letters sometimes you'll see it where your letters are all jarbled like this and they make no sense sometimes they're not even in the right order if that's the case you can group them. Okay, let's group uh, world back together. Okay, group. Now see how it says world. Make it. Make it. Thank you. It's still out of order, even though it's grouped. That's where you're going to use the attach. 
use attach. I want it just like this. Don't do and don't mess everything around. Don't try and free up some vinyl for me. Make it just like that. Make it. Bam. Now it's there. Okay? And I can again move these wherever I want. That's when you're going to use attach. Uh, weld essentially welds them together. So let's say I'm doing it like this. I'm doing a connected word. Okay. So I want the W and the Z and the and I almost said zero and the O uh, in those two words connected. This is going to be you know a special design that I'm doing or something. Um, if I don't weld these and I just attach them. What it's going to do is when I go to make it, oh, I forgot to attach. I attach this and this and attach. Okay. It's going to leave them there. Um, but what it's going to do is the top part of this W, it's going to cut it out of the O. Okay. I don't want it to do that. I want it to be this all to be one piece of vinyl. That's when you're going to weld it. It's basically going to make these two things one single image. See how it did that? It's one single image, even though it's two words. And at one point we had it one word with five other letters. It's now all one image. Okay. That's what weld does. Um, you can't, once you weld, you cannot unweld. You can detach once you attach, but you cannot unweld. So make sure you're doing it the way you want and make sure it's perfect before you move on. Right now, I haven't done anything else other than move my image. Let me go back and show you what I mean. Okay, right now, none of these are welded. If I'm gonna click everything, weld it together, this is all one. Now, if I start doing different things, I can't unweld it later on. Make sure you have it perfect because right now I can click the back button and unweld it. As I get further down the road, I can't. I'm going to have to unback, un, you know, undo, 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 undo until I get back to where I welded it. Right? Um, I think that's pretty much going to cover what we need to do with Design Space. Um, the problem that I see most people having is contour. Okay, now... I have these all attached. I need to detach them. Um, but contour seems to be uh, the biggest one that people struggle with. Weld, slice, attach, contour. Um, slice is like a cookie cutter. It slices it. It cuts that the one image out of another image. Um, weld attaches those two images together so they're all one image all one picture all one piece of vinyl um attach means i have several different things i have h e l l and o and they're all separate uh let's see we'll show you that here i have this and i ungroup it what did it do oh it messed up on me okay um Thank you, Design Space. We're not trying to make a video. Uh, let's ungroup it. I now have the word hello, but I have all these different. I can move them wherever I want. I'm making a funky image, and I want it to look like this. It's going to say hello, and you got to figure out what it says. Okay? Group them back together. Make it. It still put them all together because I didn't attach it. I have to attach it. Now it's going to tell Design Space, print these out exactly like this, okay? Uh, weld, we already went over. Flatten, flattens everything into one single image. Helpful if you're doing a print and cut. And then you have your contour. Contour is if I have... Um, oh, boy, I've really screwed this one up, haven't I? Let's do an image. 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 Um, this one. Okay. Insert my elephant. All right. Well, design space is freaking out on me, okay? So that seems like it's a good spot to finish the video. If I were to upload the elephant, I could use contour on that elephant image to take the heart away. I fill it back in with black, fill the ear back in with black, fill the eye back, so I just have a silhouette. All right? Um... That's going to wrap it up for this video. Again, sorry for the length, but it is an introductory 
to Cricket Design Space. Uh, if you guys have um, any anything that I didn't cover in this um, that maybe you want to see in a future video or you want me to do a part two or an extended version, uh, <laughs> extended of what the length already is, uh, leave a comment down below and let me know. Let me know what you want to see and I'll make a video on it. Um, again, this is a beginner one, so I'm assuming you want beginner things, but I will be doing more advanced videos. Um, I don't know how advanced. We'll see how the channel goes. Uh, this is the first one that we've uploaded, so I thank you for watching. And guys, uh, again, please leave that, um, that uh, click that subscribe button down below and hit that bell, and we'll see you in the next video.